Hey, good morning, family. Pastor Artie here with some manna and coffee this morning. You know, turn with me to Jeremiah 18. We're going to talk about the potter today. In uh, verse 1, it says, The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there will I cause you to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheel. And when the vessel that he had made of clay was marred in his hands of the potter, and so he made it again another vessel that seemed to be good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as the potter, saith the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, are, so are ye also, so are ye in my hand, O house of Israel. You know, let's take verse 6 and kind of turn it around a little bit, kind of make it a little more relevant to us, where it says, O man, Cannot I, can I not do with you as the potter did with the clay? And behold, the clay that is in, pot, in the potter's hand, and so ye are in my hand, O oh man. You know, I wanted to put us in there because I want to rightly divide the word correctly. And this is to, this is Old Testament law to Israel. Well, I'm not Jewish, so I got to bring it into my context, how I can read this and put it uh, to my understanding and where it says that the potter was making a work on the wheel it said he was rotting it he was he was molding and shaping and stuff and I remember uh, years back I was young and uh, matter of fact I think I just entered a seminary and there was a guy Mike and Pam Roselle and he's a potter and he was making a clay vessel and it was amazing to me because you know when he put this big lump of clay on the wheel, it was square, it's a big blob, and then all of a sudden he turned on the wheel and he gets a little water and he starts to mold it and push it and shape it. And he was saying, what I'm doing is centering it on the wheel. And then once he got it centered, then he could start working it and, and he would rot, what the word in the Old Testament is rot. He was working it and making and shaping it and the Lord quickened me while I was in the audience and I'm looking at that and saying, you know, that's me. Just like the Bible says in verse 18 of, I mean, in, in chapter 18 of Jeremiah, how God's hands are around me all the time, working and shaping me, making me into that vessel that he wants to see. Not the vessel that I think he needs to make, but the vessel he needs to see that he sees in me. It's funny, you know, some of my professors back in, in college when I was, you know, when I was in seminary, there was one, I mean, they all had these great little sayings, you know, all these guys were like little country preachers, but they had some amazing knowledge and wisdom. And one told me one time, you know, you, if you don't have a faith worth testing, it's not worth having. Another one said, the only thing you find in the middle of the road are white lions and dead chickens. But this one pastor who was teaching me, I think it was in, um, I think it was in New Testament studies. He was telling us that, you know, we can take an apple and cut it open and we can count the seeds in an apple, but only God can count the apples in a seed, which is very true. But see, he already knows what is coming. He knew in my life what he would make me from the day I was born, when the, actually from the day I was conceived. You know, it says that he knew, he formed me and shaped me, and he knew exactly what he was gonna do, that little lump of clay in my mom's womb. He started molding and shaping and making the arms and the legs and the hands and the feet and the heart and the inner organs and the head and the big nose and the big ears. And he made he made a cartoon character. No, he actually made Pastor Artie. But he knew exactly what he wanted me to be. 
And there were times in my life that I kind of walked away from what he wanted to do and he would just take it. And like it says here, it wasn't good in his eyes. I think it was in verse two or three. And he takes it and he throws it away and he makes it again. He collapses everything in and molds it, reshapes it, and pushes it all back together and starts remolding and, and taking. And then what he does is once he gets it, it shaped and molded on the outside, kind of like the rough form of the outside, then he starts going in with these tools and cleaning the inside and hollowing it out to make the vessel. And he takes these big hunks of little clay, or big hunks of clay, big hunks of little clay. How do you have a big hunk of a little thing? He takes these hunks of clay out of there and throws them away because they're not needed. In our lives, there's things in our lives that are just not needed. You know, for years, I was addicted to food. I was heavy, I was overweight, I was addicted. And he started to take those things away from me. I don't need you to need that. I need you to need more of the word. This is the manna. This right here, here's the manna, here's the food right here. And that's what I need in my life. And so he started making me what he wanted me to be. Forming me and shaping me, putting into me and taking out of me those things that aren't needed and putting the things that are needed in there. The shape, the, the, the way the base is, the way my body, my body is formed. He makes all that. And then he puts into me himself, his very personage he puts in me. And the way that's illustrated is not in the potter's story in, in, verse, in chapter 18, but it's in how a potter works. As I was watching Mike work that clay, and man, he was just, I mean, pushing it. And you could see every muscle on his arm just, just flexing and, and working. And then all of a sudden you see the sweat start to form. And literal, not just beads of sweat, but I mean like just sweat pouring off of his face. And it was falling upon the clay that he was making the vessel. And that very fluid, that very bodily fluid of his, his sweat was falling into that vessel. And God showed me, that's my blood that's falling into you, that I put inside you. The blood that I shed on the cross of Calvary, I pour into you. You see, without water, there's no vessel or no clay. Because if you take the water away from clay, what do you got? You just got a hard piece of rock. You need the moisture to keep it formable and pliable and moldable. And that's how God wants us to do. Every day he grabs us and starts our day by taking those things out of us that he doesn't need and putting into us his very self, his very being every day to make us who he wants us to be. Today, family, are you allowing God to mold you and shape you and to make you into what he wants you to be? Are you willing to put your hands, your life, your whole body in the hands of the potter and allow him to make you into his vessel of honor. May God bless you. May he keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you. May he bring you peace today. May God pour into you his very life blood that you will be his child. You don't have to worry about the law. You're saved by grace. But even in that, he still is molding and shaping you into what he wants you to be today. And that's a child of the Most High God. We don't live unto the law, but we live unto grace. May God bless you today. Linda and I are praying for you, reaching our cities. We are always here for you. I don't know what will ever be said when all this is over but I hope that you guys will have learned something to help you to grow and to be part of God's family because that's what you are if you've never accepted him just ask him into your life just say Lord I know I've sinned 
I know I've not done what you want me to do. I've, I've become that, that vessel of dishonor. But I want to become a vessel of honor. I want you to come into me, into my heart. Mold me, shape me, make me into your vessel of honor. And I'll live for you the rest of my days. In Jesus' name, amen. You're now a part of the family of God. It says, if you believe in Christ, that's all you need to get to heaven. The rest is just byproducts of what he's going to show you in his word. Start reading the book of Romans and understand what it is to be a New Testament Christian. A Christian based on the grace of God, not on the law of God. Because you don't live under the law, you live under grace. May you have a blessed day today, and we'll talk to you real soon. God bless you guys. Bye-bye.